The world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. That is John's Christmas story. See what I mean about John being kind of out in left field? He was different. I love John. So the light shined in the darkness and the word became flesh. The one who once shouted, let there be light, came to us in Jesus. The one who once shouted, let there be light, God Almighty, came to us incarnate in the flesh. So when we think about Christmas, it's more than just the birth of a baby. It's about God who created and sustained the universe, breaking into our world, light and life, word and flesh, grace and, grace and truth, the only son of our father in glory. So there's lots and lots of scripture about light. Now, at the very beginning of the Bible, we have the story in Genesis. Let's see how much about light it is. In the very first five verses of the Bible. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. While a wind from God swept over the waters, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that that light was good, and God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Very beginning. And then at the end of the Bible in Revelation 22, 5, talking about the new kingdom. And there will be no more night. They need no lamp, night light of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light. And in between, there is so much scripture about light. It's an important metaphor that we as Christians need to understand. And I think by the end of our time, maybe some new insights will come. So in order to talk about light, you've got to talk about darkness. So, so there's lots of darkness and light in scripture and darkness is portrayed in the form of evil, in immorality, gloom, death, and light is seen as goodness, joy, God's love. Now, when you talk about darkness in scripture, there's really two kinds of darkness. There's this, um, this, this what I would call moral morality-based dark, darkness that is uh, murder, injustice, evil, uh, you know, Adolf Hitler kind of, of darkness that per it permeates our existence. It is, it is at work, spiritual forces of darkness, this outward ex existential darkness. But then there is, I believe, a darkness that can come on the inside of people darkness that one might call emotional darkness that we can experience that really is uh, could be sadness, depression, sorrow, shame, not necessarily from anything that we've done. I mean, it can be a result of actions, but that moral darkness is, is the result of, of brokenness and flesh. The internal darkness comes because of our humanity and our imperfection, but not necessarily anything that we've done. So God responds to this darkness in Christ to both kinds of darkness. Uh, now, also, if you look in the Old Testament, darkness is kind of portrayed in a way that is a little bit different from darkness in the New Testament. 
Uh, in Proverbs 4, darkness is the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. Um, what else can I share? The psalmist says, the Jewish exiles sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in misery and in irons. Job, my face is red with weeping and deep darkness is on my eyelids. So in the Old Testament, the Hebrews or the, the Old Testament people saw darkness as something to be uh, endured. They saw God as the hope to get them out of the darkness. They saw Jesus or the promised Messiah, which wasn't around then, uh, as the future hope and, and that they were going to be sitting in darkness and that God was going to help them endure. That, that darkness was what happened when you were a human and, and God was there to, to get you through it. Faith in God brought hope that they would make it through the darkest of times. Now, in the New Testament, it's a little bit different because we see in John's writing that not only did Christ... Yes, not unless we hit it. Yes, it's been hit. Sorry, guys. Can you hear me now? I wonder what the last thing they heard was. <laughs> okay, let me rewind and let me give you a, a little update. Did you hear my joke? Blow your horn. Okay. Um, we're talking about darkness and light. And um, darkness in, is uh, two kinds of darkness. There's darkness that is uh, exterior, that is evil, that is gloom, that like murder, um, abuse, uh, injustice, corruption. Then there's darkness that can be internal, that can, can take the form of maybe sadness or feelings of shame or, or even depression. And that, that um, the Old Testament view of darkness was about enduring, that God was the entity or the, the sovereign who was going to help them survive the darkness. But then we get to the New Testament where actually light actually comes into the world. Light breaks into the world. And we, if we will look, we can see that light and we can be illuminated, changed. Uh, our, our lives can be altered because of that light. Jesus walks with us during our darkest hours and calls us to walk in his love. He embodies the light. To, and he demonstrated that by his compassion to the sick, his mercy to sinners. He teaches us by his word and example to live and be the children of light. Okay, I'm going to unpack that a little bit. When I was growing up, we lived about a half mile from my grandma on, on Huff Creek. That was the general area, but the post office was Cyclone. If you wanted to mail me a letter, it had to come to Cyclone, uh, West Virginia. But the little tiny stretch that I lived in was called Lake Homa. Hence, I was raised at Lake Homa Baptist Church. All of it's just a stretch in the road. Curvy road. And I would often walk about a half mile around the curve down to my grandma's house. And I succinctly remember one evening in the summer when I started out to come home, walking around the curve to get to my home. And, and I couldn't see my home. I knew it was around the corner. And it was getting dark. And you know how in the summer when things are getting dark, you can still see a little bit, but, but not a lot. And, and I was walking in. In, I don't know about you guys, but in West Virginia, um, the roads are kind of high up and the, the berm has a drop off. And so there were lots of rocks and it was, it was dangerous walking because I couldn't see. And of course, the cars couldn't see me as they came barreling around the, the curve. And I began to get scared. And I was like walking as fast as my 10 year old legs would take me. You know, you're holding your breath and like, if I could just see my house, you know, walking as fast as I can grandma's house in the background, dad's house around the corner. And just as I turned the curve, I saw a light coming toward me, 
walking and I, I, I was first I was taken aback but I, I stopped and I kept walking and I heard the person who was carrying the light and it was my dad and his nickname for me was boo boo it's dad my dad knew that I had put off coming home it was dark and he knew I would be walking home and he came after me with the light so that I would be safe on my walk home that was my dad that, my friends, is our Heavenly Father. And then somebody with clothes on carrying the light would be Jesus. The Jesus person who is physically with us, who came to be incarnate, who walks alongside us and isn't just the sovereign that we, we pray to and we hope that will get us through, but that we physically have with us through the Spirit that is walking us home. Jesus is walking us home. I love remembering that story. I love thinking about my dad because that is how Jesus is. And to coin that, that old Motel 6 commercial, he'll leave the light on for you. Light is a huge, huge part of our story. So, we celebrate that light piercing the darkness and that light coming to enliven our lives. But there's another difference between the Old Testament concept of light and the New Testament. We see the light and we have to receive the light. You know, on Christmas Eve, we have a tradition of taking a candle and lighting that candle from the Christ candle and passing the light along in the service and then singing Silent Night. We'll do some version of that Thursday night in a safe way with electric candles, just to give you a, 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 a preview. Thank you, Keith. Um, but what does the person whose candle is not lit have to do? What do they have to do? Anybody can answer. They have to receive the light. They have to position themselves to allow their candle to be lit. So you see the light, you receive the light, and then you be the light. That's the difference. Really, the light passages in the Old Testament don't go quite that far. But boy, a light on a hill. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be uh, put out. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Those are all New Testament examples of light. Well, how is it that we came to pick December 25th to be the day the light came? We know it happened, but in um, Jesus' day, people didn't really remember birthdays. They didn't have birth certificates. They remembered the days that they named their children because they went to the temple and they had a naming ceremony, which happened six, eight days after birth. So there's no record of what day Jesus was born. Why is it December 25th? Well, some people will say that it's because um, of the pagan winter solstice festivals that we picked this day to kind of redeem it, make it Christian. I have a completely new reason that I believe that winter solstice, after the winter solstice, is the day that we pick for Jesus' birthday. Tomorrow is the longest night of the year. It's the winter solstice. It is the day where there is the least light. And oftentimes churches will have a longest day service. And Joan, our executive minister, is going to have a longest day service online tomorrow night at 7. I will send out the link for you to get. All you do is email this email and they'll send you a link if you'd like to go. Because there are people grieving right now who need this blue Christmas, this acknowledgement of my pain, this acknowledgement that I've lost somebody in the middle of this this, this pandemic and that Jesus is with me because that light gets us through these dark times. Well, anyway, when you think about 
the 21st or some years it's the 22nd. I think that depends on leap years because we are on the Gregorian calendar. Oh, people long ago made these decisions. But when you think about it, after tomorrow, what happens? After tomorrow on Monday, what happens on Tuesday? More light. More light. And then we have Christmas. Tomorrow is as bad as it's going to get in terms of darkness. And every day after that, there's going to be more light and more light and more light and more light. So I think it's appropriate that December 25th be the birthday of Jesus or the day that we picked for that birthday because he bore that light and bears that light to us. Now there's a lot of examples of people bearing light. There's a lot of examples of uh, people seeing the light, accepting the light, and then being the light. And our task is to be the light, Peggy, like you've been saying. Whatever our task is, however we can bring light into the world, that's our job. Now, light illuminates, and sometimes it illuminates things that aren't good. So sometimes we bring light to make things obvious. Sometimes we bring light to show the goodness Sometimes we bring light so that we see that there are children in suffering, so that we see that there are people that are trafficked, so that we see that there are things that need to change. And we bring light so that we can be like Jesus and we can bring healing through prayer. We can bring healing through medicine. We can bring healing through food. We can bring healing by providing clothing. We can bring healing by visiting the sick. We can bring healing and light by going to the prisons. We can bring healing by teaching in school. We can bring healing by being a nurse. We can bring light by being that smile to that cashier who's tired. We can bring healing and light by just being the light. We can bring healing and light because we've seen the light, we've received the light, and then we become the light. Not just at Christmas, but all the time. All the time. There's never a day off. In John, we says, the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says, I am the light, while hating a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light. There's a lot of verses like that. Now, I know you know people who bring the light. And, and that's what I want to do in my life. I know that it's what you want to do in your life. And let's pray right now that God will help us do that. God... We see the light in Jesus. We receive the light in Jesus.